Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Scavenger. Welcome to today's video. We're playing some more Chasing Sunsets today, and we are on Chapter 4. However, I am not playing the entire chapter in this episode. That uh, takes a lot of work, and I just don't feel like it right now. But we will get into it, and we'll see where things are going to start off. And uh, as things would have it, it looks like we're starting off in Boston about 16 years ago in the Campbell home. So let's see what's going on 16 years ago. All right, we're uh, in Alex's room. He's sleeping. What's going on? Oh, it's a Channel 4 News. Okay. As what's left of Hurricane Tegan blows through the greater Boston area, residents are warned. Uh, wait, did somebody turn the light on? Oh, Jay's coming in. Psst. Alex, wake up. I don't know. There's an exclamation. So I don't know if she's saying it like excitedly or whatever, but anyway. I just assumed she would have whispered. What? Big storm, Alex. I declare emergency bed for it. Oh, yeah? What's the password? Jay gives you a frustrated look. Maybe mommy and daddy's bed for it has less attitude. I'm just kidding. Get in before I change my mind. Jay wiggles in next to you with a satisfied sigh. Her soft breath tickles your nose. We should have more emergency bed forts, not just for storms. Why? I don't know. I just like it here. Well, as soon as it's safe, you gotta go back to your bed. We'll see about that. As her warmth and scent surround you, a strange tingle forms in the pit of your stomach. The two of you lay without speaking, listening contently as the winds wreak havoc outside. Alex? I'm sleepy, sis. You can stay until it's safe. I'll take first watch. Jay waits until you're breathing deep and since she thinks you've drifted off. I'm safe wherever you are, Alex. <laughs> you know that's silly. Soon Jay's soft snoring joins your own as the storm continues to rage. Alright, I think we're back in the present time. I'm not sure why we had that little blast from the past there uh, i guess it just gives us more insight into like what what jay thought of alex maybe i'm not really sure anyway it looks like we're back um in present time jay stares moodily out of the overcast morning no tanning this morning i guess those are some ugly clouds jay glances at the journal in her hand as she moves towards her bed so he rode the trans-siberian to moscow and flew back to Palmero from there. I've been drinking a lot more lately. It's a good way not to dwell on what I could have done differently. Still, waking up in David's place makes putting it behind me impossible. Poor Alex. David's death really messed him up. If my last update is anything to go by, I've been on a month-long bender. I have to find a better way to cope. There are no answers in the bottle. Should I just walk into his room and hug him? No, no. There'd be questions. Hmm. There's a new entry a few days later. Mom left a voicemail. Mom and Dad are coming to Sicily tomorrow. I thought it'd be tough to face them, but I just feel relieved. What? I wonder if it's just the two of them, or if Jay's with them. This must be the reunion he didn't want to talk about. Wait. Dad and Mom met up with Alex just a week before... A wave of emotion sweeps through her, and she fights back, pulling tears. Smiling through the pain, she feels a weight on her heart lifted. You couldn't know it was goodbye, but at least you saw each other before the end. Jay lays back with her eyes closed until the swirling emotions recede. Odd. He didn't write anything about how it went, or what they talked about. Skipping ahead, he paid off his tab at whatever the hell that place is. <laughs> Hello, what do we have here? Oh, he got picked up by some married chick on the way out. She was so timid. I thought she had me mixed up with some celebrity. She said I was her pick and she asked to come back to my place. I almost said no, but there was something intriguing about her. Yep, he's gonna f her. Am I really going to do this to myself again? Jay feels a flash of jealousy, which is quickly overwhelmed by curiosity. Her name was Fiona, and she said this was payback for her husband's cheating. I should have backed out, but I didn't, and I know why. Red hair, green eyes. Wait, this was just a few months ago. 
Does this mean he's still almost absently Jay slides her pants aside? Man, you know. You know what happened after that. I thought I had Jay out of my head. My fiana proved that wrong. Even the scent of her reminded me of her. Jay's uh, enjoying this uh, a little too much. All right. Well, Jay finds herself and the journal falls to the floor amid her stifled moans. Yep. Now she's done reading. You awaken suddenly as one of your journals slides off your desk and onto the floor. Hmm. There must be a pretty good surf up. The boat's moving more than usual. <laughs> Glancing at your phone, you see you have a message waiting. I guess I'm starting off my day with Fiona here crazy. All right. I thought I tried to ignore her before. Yeah, I think I think we're going to continue to ignoring her this could be bad she might be one of those people that uh kind of she could be a stalker basically but um i'm just gonna ignore it hopefully she can't find me there we go i'm not in the mood for her particular brand of crazy this morning i better get a shower before the bathroom gets busy yeah this feels amazing I even managed to get a shower without flashing my junk to every girl on the deck. That's better than the first time. As you soak in the warm shower, you hear the bathroom door open. Um, uh, occupied? Jay strides in nonchalantly and begins detangling her hair as if you aren't there. I'll be quick. This humidity really does a number on my hair. Jesus Christ, Jay, I'm naked in here. Oh, please. It's not like we haven't shared a bathroom before. Well, that was before you had... Jay glances at your poorly concealed crotch in the mirror and smirks. We've certainly grown a bit since then, haven't we? Do any of the locks around here work? <laughs> yeah, about that. The bathroom door is janky. This is revenge for the container on the docks, isn't it? Jay turns and approaches the shower. Her tense emerald gaze boring into you. Her movement oozes with which your nether regions interpret as the green light to mutiny. Oh god, no. Not now. Uh, hurry up, I'm almost done. Jay's smoldering eyes look deep into yours before drifting downward. Are you really, though? I knew it. This is payback. With a mischievous smirk, Jade turns back toward the mirror. Oh, Alex, you aren't getting off that easy. That wasn't payback. This is payback. You gape in mingled shock and lust for several moments before finding your tongue. When I accidentally saw you yesterday, you almost jumped overboard. And overnight you become a Miley Cyrus Father's Day card? For a moment, Jade's smirk fades and her reflection looks conflicted. I, I read about Fiona in your journal. She reminded you of someone, didn't she? Fiona? What does she have to do with anything? This time it's not your imagination looking back at you out of the mirror, Alex. Fuck, I forgot I even wrote about that. When you're done taking care of that, George wants to see us topside. Jay grabs her robe and slips out, leaving you confused and alone. I don't, um, I don't know how that went. Was she upset that he was being, like, kind of private and defensive? Kind of hard to tell. Your renegade ignores your outraged glare. Seriously? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Sometimes you just got to talk to it. All right, 30 minutes later. Arriving at the conference room minutes later, you find the girl seated across from George. Morning, George. Ladies. Sorry I'm late. Jay shoots you a wicked smirk. Okay, I don't think she's mad. I just think they're both very conflicted. Not sure what to do with their interesting situation. You were sure in a shower for a while, massaging out some tension. It's fair to say I was dealing with an unexpected pain. Was that a slight limp I detected when you walked in? Want to take bets on which of us walks funny when this game is over? Ooh, I love games. George clears his throat with the clear intent of interrupting this banter. If you don't mind, we should get started. There's a lot to cover this morning. Miss Chapman, since you've already begun, the floor is yours. Mallory looks uncharacteristically nervous as she begins. So, I've been transparent about my father working with Sarah at Prizer. And about his suicide when I was young. 
Alex gave me a quick rundown. What an awful thing to carry with you. Yeah, well, the more I discover, the less awful that memory becomes. Digging through a storage unit told the real story of who he was. And who he wasn't. What do you mean? He was obsessed with a colleague at the office. Kept detailed files on her. Candid photographs, a lipstick stained coffee cup, even a hair clipping. He went so far as to put his career on hold to continue working with her. We're not talking about your mom, are we? No. We're talking about yours. I don't recall Sarah ever mentioning a secret admirer or stalker. I doubt she ever saw him as one. He was very meticulous. He wrote about asking her out after her divorce and getting turned down. It sounds like he didn't take no for an answer. Prizer tried to pull him off Pregnia to pursue Crucible full time, but he refused to leave Sarah's team until she quit anyway. That should have been the end of it then. You'd think, and now you know a little bit about who Devin Chapman was. But what's relevant to me has more to do with who he wasn't. Mallory pauses, and you can see she's conflicted in her eyes. Encourage her? Or wait patiently? Um, should I try to encourage her? Let's see, let's see what happens. You won't be judged for your father's sins. Getting what you're after will be a lot easier if we all know how to help you. It's just very personal. When dad passed, OCFS ran my DNA to identify my next to Ken. That's when I learned Devin Chapman was not my father. No relation at all, in fact. Well, that's a relief. But I'll confess, I don't see where this is going yet. Well, the obvious explanation was that my mother had an affair. I had that theory tested when I finally tracked her down. Again, no DNA match. Imagine learning everything you grew up believing about who you were was a lie. In desperation, I ran my DNA against a lock of Sarah's hair from my dad's locker. Oh, now it makes sense. Those are the DNA results you shared with me in Boston. One of them. I submitted five tests. They all came back inconclusive. All except one. What did the test results say, George? You hear footsteps approach, and you're interrupted by Captain Oliver and Sophie. I can't remember how Captain Oliver sounded. I know he's French. I'm not going to do a French accent. So, apologies. Apologies for the intrusion, George. When Liani, she has changed course. Liani? It's not Liani. It's L Lanani, I think. Lanani is a tropical cyclone that was projected to swing north of the islands. Damn, just what we didn't need. What can we expect if it hits us? Forty knot winds and rough seas at best. But a smart captain plans for the worst. That means we must be safely anchored at the hurricane hole before sundown. Hurricane hole? A sheltered bay to weather the storm. But much needs to be done between now and then. All hands, including guests, will be needed to help prepare. Lisa's flight arrives this afternoon. If this doesn't get diverted, she'll need a pickup. I need storm supplies fetched from the marina shop regardless. That is near the airport. Alex, please head into town and collect all the supplies and our CEO when she arrives. Jay, will you help Oliver and the crew prepare the sunset for heavier weather? Come, Miss Jay. I'll show you what to do. But... Oh, don't worry, dear. He's not that naughty. Without permission. It's not that, Sophie. I just wanted to finish listening to what Mallory had to say. Then please join me on the bridge when you're ready. Oliver leaves, but to your surprise, Sophie remains. Her curiosity peaked. So far the DNA tests were inconclusive. What did the fist say? There's a high probability that I'm Sarah's sister. Jay just stares in astonished disbelief while something profound clicks into place for you. That's not possible. You're years apart. You look nothing alike. That test result is why I allowed her to join us. I can't think of a rational explanation. Um, I think, I think it's possible. I'm going to, I'm going to go this route and just see what happens. I mean, they're, they're working with DNA. Anything's possible, right? I've had these little deja vu moments around her since we first met. Little mannerisms, quirks, even her scent. There's something to this. Oh no. 
Remember that time you French kissed your literal aunt in Boston? That was awesome. Hey, I'm right here, you know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I haven't forgotten any of my recent French kisses, sis. <laughs> Jay kicks you under the table and glares daggers at you. <laughs> then let us set aside conjecture and look to science. Sophie steps purposely toward a confused Mallory. What's going on? Oh, she took her hair. Oh, Link. Ouch. Dr. Allward won't settle for inconclusive. She'll get to the bottom of this. Dr. Allward? Don't look so surprised. Sarah was my colleague long before she was my friend. How do you think Oliver got this job? To be absolutely clear, I have no interest in the estate, no matter what the test reveals. I just want to find out who I am, and then I'll be on my way. That's not how things work in this family, Mallory. Once you're a part of it, we won't let you go that easy. Whether you like it or not, you can't help but notice Jay is looking at you as she says it. I think she's saying that Alex isn't getting out of the family again either. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now, is there anything else? Yes. I have an impossible favor to ask of you. And you have a million reasons to say no. What kind of favor? The shipment of PGB-132 earmarked for human trials was recovered from customs yesterday. Mandu? How could you know of this? I found Sarah's notes on Project October. PGB-132 in the storage room on campus. Here's the thing. I need to pick someone up from the airport, too. Amanda. Yes. Who is this Amanda? My best friend. She suffers from a rare variant of Ritz syndrome. I'm gonna stop you right there. What you're alluding to is out of the question. Ethical implications aside, we risk handing Pariser a victory by violating a court order. About that, if we neutralize the crooked judge, we nullify the court order. We? Miss Chapman, if removing a sitting federal judge were that easy. I reached out to some colleagues after Alex told me what you were up against. On Thursday, Ledger will publish Jub Bear's text history with his ex-wife. Those text messages confirm your suspicions and will force his recusal, if not arrest. Setting aside for the moment that your friends hacked a federal judge's phone, if the price tag for it is treating your friend with PGB-132, we can't help you. No, I did it to help Alex, even though it does remove an obstacle. It's also my way of thanking you all for the kindness you've shown me. And, for the record, there was no hacking involved. His ex-wife gave him up. Why would she do that? Wasn't she about to be set for life? Because in exchange, Ledger offered to paint her as part of the sting. With Judge Bear likely to face criminal charges, it was an easy choice. Still impossible. Maybe when this is all cleared up, we can see about... Don't be ridiculous. You are a better man than this, George. Excuse me? We are already in candidate selection for human trials when Sarah passed. But we're not talking about a trial here. Assuming she's even a candidate. We're talking about rogue science. What would we tell her family if it went sideways? But think of what we could tell them and the whole world if it went right. Let's not hide behind liability. She is a consenting adult and we were ready months ago. It's all academic anyway. Lisa would have to make the call. You and I both know she'll listen to you. Sophie glances at the two of you meaningfully. And Sarah's children. May I say something? Of course, my dear. Amanda was fortunate to have a relatively late onset, but she is out of time. She's exhausted every other option, and now she's up against the wall. If we wait until the lawsuit is settled, it'll be too late for her. Maybe it already is. Consult, Lisa, if you must, but you know my vote. If I have one. You do the rest, George. Don't disappoint me. George's conflict is palpable, and he glances at you in silent appeal. I do think it's worth considering. I think sometimes you got to take risks, because if you don't, then you won't know. You won't know. You got to do it. 
So I'm going to say I think it's worth considering. You told me last night that doing the right thing sometimes means risking everything. This certainly seems to qualify. Here, here. All right, well, Mallory's... Like, everybody's stuff went up on this one. Like Mallory's trust and love got boosted. Jay's got boosted a little bit. But anyway, Jay and Mallory both stare at you in open admiration. I agree with Alex George. All right, I'm a risk taker. What can I say? What can I say? Artful reversal. Absorbing the lesson is one thing. Applying it quite another. Very well then. Jay, I'll have the research sent to your state room for review. Dr. Allard, you may prepare, but do not begin treatment unless cleared by Lisa or I. Merci, uh, Mallory. Please bring Amanda directly to the campus from the airport. Jay, you must be Oliver's right hand while I'm ashore. He'll count on you. I'll do my best not to let him down. We should head out before the weather gets any worse. As you step onto the deck, the sun's pale orb is already veiled by the advancing clouds. I hope Amanda's alright. Putting her on a plane was asking a lot of her. Asking a lot seems to be your sort of thing. Shall we go through the list? Hey now, it's always paid off so far, hasn't it? We'll just have to see how it all plays out. If you were right about Prizer, and if that story on the judge has legs, then I've been worth the inconvenience. I was gonna say that you're turning out to be a good friend to have. I'll take the win. Let's get moving, or the rideshare will leave without us. She said people are making a run on disaster supplies, so traffic is a nightmare. <laughs> oh, hey sis, I thought you were helping out Oliver. Um, yes? What's going on? Well, I stopped by the galley first. Well, lucky you. At least one of us had breakfast this morning. Clearly feeling awkward, Jay fidgets and looks at her feet. Coming to a decision, she proudly presents a sack launch she was hiding behind her back. <laughs> what a goofball. Well, we can't have you going hungry, can we? Are you seeing this, Mal? A glitch in the Matrix. It's just a sandwich. Don't make it weird. And be careful, Alex. Watching the exchange with amusement, Mallory smirks at you knowingly. So here's the crazy thing. Mallory is probably related to Alex. Like, by blood. Probably. Maybe. If everything works out the way Mallory thinks it's going to. Which means, Mallory, totally out of the question, right? But Alex and Jay are not related. Just saying. Just throwing it out there again. That way you all know, that way you get it through your heads, they're not related. Alright, anyway, let's keep going. Who are you, and what have you done with my sister? And we get the bird, okay. Without looking back, Jay flips you off, but you also notice a little swing in her hips. I'd normally have a god-tier incest joke lined up, but I just can't keep up with you guys. It's cute that you think that I won't throw you overboard because you're a girl. <laughs> All right. And with that, that is where we're going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, you know what to do. As always, as I say every freaking time, go ahead and smack the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.